Welcome back to the channel and today I bring a heavy weight, at least for me. I'm a huge Dune fan and only recently I had a chance to play it for the first time this masterpiece. So today, finally, I'm very proud to be able to bring Dune, the board game from Gale Force 9. Um, this is not going to be a how to play game, it, this is a fairly complex game, there are already very good videos on YouTube how to play, but I would like to show you this video, go through the components, and share with you feelings, talk about Dune, because I love Dune as a, as a sci-fi masterpiece, all, the whole collection, the all the 19, 20 books that already exist, and definitely this is a game that if you are a Dune fan, you should you should really, really try. Um, first of all, so this is a remake of a game from the 70s that I've never played, I've never seen. I didn't do my homework before recording this video, but you know, it's, it's an old thing. So it says, Dune, a game of conquest, diplomacy, and betrayal. And the cover of the, of the box could not be better so you see the worm here right in the middle you see the two moons i don't know if it, there is two moons or not in june um you also see the fremen here trying to ride the worm uh, unfortunately i am getting some some mold here on the box it's a problem that uh, everyone every every board gamer faces and it really hurts me to see mold affecting my games i'm trying to constantly clean them um but let's go and see what is inside we'll see everything here by the way i also have the expansion so i'll follow up this video also with each individual expansions expansions for this game because i want to be able to play with all but let me read what's what the box says imagine you can control the forces of a noble family guild or religious order on a barren planet which is the only source for the most valuable substance in the known universe spies imagine you can rewrite the script for one of your famous science fiction books of all time so what this means is that you'll be controlling one of the houses in the base game the, f the six main ones and you can rewrite the story and be victorious with different houses Welcome to the acclaimed 40-year-old board game, which allows you to recreate the incredible world of Frank Herbert's Dune. In Dune, you will be you will become uh, the leader of one of your the, the six great factions, each which is to control the most valuable resource in the universe, Melange, the spice, the mysterious spice found at great cost on planet Dune. As Duke Leto Atreides says, all fades before melange a handful of spies will buy a home on tupil i don't know what tupil is it cannot be manufactured although they, they do it it must be mined on the rack is it's unique and it has true geriatric properties okay mm. so let's see what is inside this is how my game is affected by the mold. See these stains here? It's incredible. It's all. It's the the front pages. It it gets. I don't know if it's the quality of the material. I don't know. And the box. It's the. the if you, if you know how to avoid this or how to properly clean, because it's it's like infestating the game. It's expanding. It's it's it really hurts. It really hurts. Um, Cool. So this game, as you will see, it has a lot of lore in the manual. So you'll be able to, if you are not aware of what Dune is, probably you, are not, you don't care about this game. But if you like to read again about Dune, the manual is full of references to, to the books. Okay, You see here on the side, there are some quotations from, in this case, Princess Irulan. Um, the preface is, preface is giving some introduction. I won't read this all. I would love to, but this is not a <laughs> literature channel. And then let's let me show you the factions, okay? And introducing the factions. By the way, this is a very asymmetric game. Each faction will play differently. They have uh, certain powers, and it's very curious because the powers they have reflect very well what they are in the movie. So let's see each of them, and I'll try to explain how how that works. So first of all the Atreides, as expected, right? 
The leader is Paul Muadib. Sorry, let me just arrange a manual differently. Paul Muadib. The leader means that this will not be a playable character. It will be the face of um, your faction, basically. You don't play with Paul. But you will have leaders that you'll play in the battles. And those are the characters from the movies and the books. So, to fear I what? And this number here is the power in a battle. Lady Jessica, Dr. Wellington Huey, the guys Duncan Hydeo, which is one of the most important characters in the whole saga from Ferg Herberts and the, the sequels. Uh, so, spoiler alert, he didn't die or he died, but he will be back. And Gurney Halleck. So, you don't see Leto as a character because when this game happens, Leto... No, Leto didn't die because there's also Dr. Yui here. So Dr. Yui dies when Leto dies. Um, so why isn't Leto here? That's strange. And it says, The Atreides, led by the youth youthful Paul Atreides, Modib, rightful heir to the planet, gifted with valiant lieutenants and the strange partial awareness of the future, but beset them to, by more powerful and treacherous opponents. Uh, then the Bene Gesserit that are commanded by Mother Mohaim and includes Alia here. So yeah, this is strange because Alia is already grown in the game. Margot Lady Fenring, Mother Ramalo, Princess Irland. Princess Irland is also not on the Emperor's side, but on the Bene Gesserit side. And Wana Yue, which should be the wife of Dr. Wellin Yue, which, if I'm not mistaken, she is being held hostage by the Baron Harkonnen. That's why he, he, they made him convert him into a traitor. Oh, I'm spoiling everything here. The Bene Gesserit sister were represented by Reverend Mother Gaius Alan Mohim, ancient and indis inscrutable, carefully trained in psychological control and a genius at achieving her ends through the efforts of others. That's, that's, she's the biggest manipulator. And all of them have the same strength. Five. Then the Emperor, Emperor Shaddam IV, and he brings also, sorry, here, Arshim Fenrir, which is the husband of Margot, Lady Margot, Captain Arthur Sham, some of them I don't know, Kaid, no, Bursag, Bashar, I guess Bashar is a, is a military title, so this is not a real character, and Bursag may be that. There are not many... Uh, Imperial characters during the, this time, the time of this timeline section, so they had to come up with some things. Um, the Emperor, His Majesty the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV, keen and efficient, yet easily lulled into complacency by his own trapping powers. Okay, so they don't explain the difference in the game, I'll need to go through it a little bit. And then the Fremen. The Fremen are led by Lead Kinis, the scientist here, the ecologist. And the warriors or the leaders are Stilgar, which is the most powerful leader in the game. In battles, it's Stilgar. He has a seven of power. Then Shani, Paul's wife. OTM. I don't know who he is. Shout out Mapes. So this is the dwarf lady that exists on the David Lynch movie. And I don't remember on the, the new movie. And Jamis. Jamis appears on the, the Dennis Villeneuve. Is the guy that fights against Paul. And Paul kills him. To prove that he, he was challenged. He, he challenges Paul. Remember that in the desert? That's Jamis. Although here is a white white man. But in the movie was a black guy. And then there's also the Spacing Guild. Lead, led by Edric. The Spacing Guild represented by the steersman Edric. The, la the league with smuggler ends, monopolist of transport, yet addicted to ever increasing spice flows. And the guys with stubborn two egg, master baby, Ismar two eggs, so these are the same family, Su Su Suk, and guild representative. I I don't know, although the name two egg, the, the two egg name is familiar for some reason, but two egg, who is the two egg? I don't know. But the name. And then the Archonans. The Archonans led by the, the decadent Baron Vladimir Archonan, master of treachery and cruel deeds. There's the guy here, which looks more normal than both David Lynch and Dennis Wilton version. And he brings the whole family. Fade Rauta, which is Sting or Austin Butler. Beast Raban, which is the 
fat guy from David Lynch or Batista. Peter De Vries, which is the Murdoch from MacIver in Denis Villeneuve, or um, the guy from that 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 was Worm Tongue in in Lord of the Rings, or the voice of Shaki, the assassin doll. His name is Brad Bradiff. Yes, Bradiff. Captain Yakin Newfood. So is Newfood that name? New food that rings me a bell. And Uman Kodu, I don't know who he is. Okay, so you've been introduced to the six factions here. And now, let me just give you an overview of the, the manual for us to go deep into the components. Okay, so this is going to be an hour movie for sure. For sure, these are the stages. I will explain the stages once we have a better look at the components. So this game has something that I haven't tried, which is the base mode and the advanced game. Be aware that the base game is already too, very complex. So, once we go into the advanced mode, the game works differently, some things, and also it unlocks even more differences between the factions. So, I'm really, really interested in trying the advanced mode and see how the factions really deploy their own powers. Okay. So, then, then the game ends, uh, the, the manual ends here, and there are the Dune strategy tips. So, yeah, it, it becomes like a book, how to play the game. Faction strategy tips, how to play with each faction. Okay, so, for example, I can give you an overview here. Fremen, they have, look at the first sentence, your major handicap is poverty. You will have very few money, but you will have the power of the numbers and the power of working... Um, moving in the in the planet the spacing guild has a weak array of leaders but then they travel they bring the, the forces into the planet very well the Bene Gesserit they re, the revival rate is very low but then they are a, a very good ally and they have the power of the voice they can command the the others the Atreides here uh, that they must purchase cards and cheap onto Dune and you have no source of income other than the spice on the planet, okay? But then you have other powers. I haven't played with the treaties, I need to, to check better. The Emperor. The Emperor gets the money from all the other ones that that, that use that pay certain things. And then the Arconan. The Arconan are very funny. So the Arconan are the masters of evil and treachery. So they have more treachery cards, they have more trader cards. Uh, which which it doesn't help you because you don't know what it is, but be aware that they they can screw the other factions very easily. Okay, so then the faction play sheets individually in the manual here. We'll see those once we look at the, the, the components. Look at how well explained this is. So one page for each faction, almost explaining the differences. And then if you really like Dune, there's the Dune synopsis here in the manual, where it tells in a short way the story, everything that happened like in a short version of the book here and some fact and you can also build alliances in the game so the way you win the game is if, if by the end of, the, of any of the 10 turns you control three three strongholds you win the game but maybe that's too difficult and you need to form alliances so the game assumes that if you form an alliance you need to choose before you start a condition to win so the standard game would be like two player alliance you need instead of three you need four strongholds but then you can have different variations or any number of players in alliances three strongholds to here to here and did they call this a more exotic game but apparently this was the original dune rules alliance game i don't know so you can choose whatever fits you best the game also has a quick start guide quick start guide where you see again the factions and how to set up everything and a very superficial explanation of all the stages in the game all the, the turn steps including the battles etc but i will explain you a little bit more detail once we look into the components okay by components so what i mean is for example these screens okay which are good see the screen is that you need to cover the money you have and the, the the resources that you have you need to hide it 
Okay, I will show you after I explain the basic of the game. There's also this again, besides what is on the manual, you also have a player of affection will have this reference guides explaining everything. Okay. And then let's start by looking at this is what you have. Let me open the, the board. The board is beautiful to the eye. Beautiful to the eye. I love it. Let's see if I can show everything here on camera. Almost, almost. I'll raise camera just for me to show everything. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Welcome to Planet Dune. Ten turns there. One, two, three, ten. And then up here you have all the stages for each turn. All the rounds. Sorry. I'm recording this a bit late. So, those are the steps that you need to go through every turn. And you play ten times that maximum okay if someone wins before you don't need to play the 10 times and then there's planet here is divided into 18 sections you have the desert which are the yellow ones you have the mountains which are the dark brown and you also have the five strongholds that are very uh, focused on the lore so you have arakin kartag sich the bar sich Tower, sorry, Aban, Abania Siege and Tuek Siege. No, Tuek, the name that I was looking for. Now I know, now I know from where the name comes from. Yep. And um, these things are called the, sec the, the territories and the sectors. And in the middle, there's a polar sink. This is the storm token. So the st there will be a storm moving around every turn around and when the storm stops this sector will every if there are units there they will be destroyed so you need to hide your units which are small things like these tokens here you need to be either on a stronghold protected or on the mountains because you are if, if you're in the middle of the desert you die basically you die okay so each faction will have components like these ones that I'm going to show you. Uh, I just picked one randomly to show you what you can find here. So you will have the circles for the leaders. Okay, oops, there was something else. And then you will have the units that you, you will place on the map in the sectors to every, to every control, wherever you need. Okay. So why the, are the leaders circles like this? There is a reason, because imagine that you invade a territory that already has units from another uh, faction. So if that's, you, you need to have a battle with that faction and it works very similarly to Sight. I guess Sight got inspiration on Dune, to be honest, uh, because you'll have a battle wheel, as you can see here. And then on the battle wheel on top, you, you will define the number of, of uh, units you want to put on a fight so they, they will if you are the winner of the fight you will lose all the units that you invest uh, if you lose the fight you lose everything okay so then you have a circle here where you will put also a leader secretly so the, your opponent is not seeing this he is also preparing his battle wheel so you combine the forces of the, the units in the map in the sector and the leader so the combined force of these two is your attack power but then it's not that simple because you will also play some cards your opponent will play cards most of the cards will kill your leader so this number will not be counted so it can go multiple ways okay but that's that's how a fight a fight happens i believe now will be a good time for me to also explain to you all the stages that you have within each round okay so in the beginning you start with there is this help you have this guide here to help okay so the first will be the storm phase so that's where the storm that we just saw moves around and the players that are uh, that will have their positioning before and after the storm they will be the ones voting in silence with a number from one to three and then you combine both numbers from one to three so it could be either two or six and the storm will move those sectors around so you can strategically kill characters if you get the right number 
Okay, so after that, the spice blows. Okay, and the spice blows is the spice blowing is basically basically a certain deck that I will find here to show you. I want to show you all the cards, so it will be the spice deck. Yes, the spice deck. There it is, the spice deck. The spice must flow. Okay, and basically you take one of these cards, and the card will tell you which sector and how many spice, which is the money here, you it will erupt. Okay, so in this case it will be in. Let me show you an easy one for me not to move the camera. So here the spice will blow on old gap, and you see here old gap. There's also oh, the places where the spice erupt. They are marked with this symbol and the number corresponding to the number of spice that will pop up there. That will be there. So you need to move there to collect spice. There will be going to be a race for the spice. But but the same deck sometimes has this card, which is the Shia Lut. Meaning that, as it says here, the worm appears on the last place where the spice appeared. Which makes sense, right? So the spice bursted, everyone went there, they made some noise, and then what happens is the worm appears there. And if that happens, the worm kills all the units that are there on that sector. So it's a bit pusher luck there. You want to race there, but you could be eaten by the worm. Okay. So that's what happens on the second stage. Then, I forgot to say that when the worm appears, there's an event called the Nexus. And on the Nexus, you are able to create alliances or break alliances with the other players. Um, so making an alliance means that you will win with that friend. You need to change the criteria for winning changes, but you also start benefiting from some of the powers of that other faction. Okay, so you have you always you start the game with an alliance card from your faction. So if I'm a friend and I have this card. And if I, if I create an, an alliance with another player, I give that player this card, which gives them a power, and I receive from that player this card, with their cards, in order to benefit the, the power. Okay, So I'll show you this after showing you the, the differences in the factions, because you will understand better. But it's very, it's very good, very interesting. Then you go to the third stage, which is the Chum Charity phase. Meaning that if you get to this stage and you only have zero or one spice, you get the remaining to get to two spice. Because you'll need the spice for the next stage, which is the bidding stage. The bidding stage. And the bidding stage basically is... There are some cards called the treasury cards. These cards here. Treasury. And on the other side you have... Sorry, these are not treasury. Just until here. On the other side, what you have is things like shields or protection or weapons or uh, useless cards that you use for buff or Karama cards, which are special power part cards. So there are many different things. I'll show you some. So this is a, the moment where you bid for the cards um, and you strategically can make your opponents bid a lot and they will have no, mo no more money for the remaining stages of, of, of the round. So be careful with that. Also, you you are, unless you are the Arcanon, you are limited to four cards in your hand. So if you go to the bidding stage already with four cards, you don't participate in the bidding. You are out automatically. Okay. So what kind of cards we have here? Let's see them. So this is a card that you will ask players question one one question, and they need to answer. So normally people use for things like. Are you going to use a certain kind of tool? And they need to say yes or no, truthfully, etc. Then you have, in this case, would be a protection against poison. So if you use this in a combat and the opponent uses a poison against you, when you reveal, you'll be protected against that poison and your leader doesn't die. This is a, a, a shield that protects against projectiles, like we see in the movie, right? When the, they have the shields. And things like guns, and they they can only they cannot penetrate the shield. Only slow-moving objects can penetrate. 
their shields. That's why the knife needs to go very slowly to go past the shield. Then, this is a weapon, a project, projectile weapon. So this is cool because you have a combo here, not a combo. These cards are made against each other, so the shield against projectiles blocks these kind of attacks, projectile attacks. Okay. Then there are useless cards like this one. It says it really says worthless cards. So they exist only to also to not not only sorry not only to bluff for you to bluff. Hey, I'm gonna use a card here. You don't know what it is, but in fact, it's nothing. But also, if you have the Banner Jesuit, you can force opponents to use these kind of cards if they have on their hands. Okay. And, and more poisons, more attacks. This will allow you to revive lead dying died leaders worthless okay so you see there are lots of different things names but basically it's what i told you those will be the, the the cards you also have this card that allow you to not to use a leader so if you know that you're going to lose you can use this card you're forced to use a leader in a battle right but if you don't want to waste a leader you can use this card and it'll it's a cheap leader so i'm stopping here on this card because i want to show you something that is really funny which is so if someone uses a last gun a laser gun and the other one defends with a shield what happens is an atomic explosion and the reason for that is if you know not from the movies but from the books mainly there is a reaction when you use a laser against a Holtzman shield. It's the, the I think it's called the Holtzman effect, right? Which is laser or a laser shield or a jet shield. It creates an atomic explosion. That has happened in the books, um, in the laboratory, etc. Uh, there are many references to that, in the especially in the the sequel, the prequels that are that are, that are happened like a thousand years before, time of Titans, etc. Um, so if that happens. Everyone participating in that battle, they die. Both players, both players lose this battle. No spice is paid for the leaders. All cards are destroyed. So it's a really, really mess. Um, so that's those are the cards. So then also um, after you have those are the cards that you can buy. So then on the revival phase, this is where you get back troops that have died. Okay, you need to pay a little bit for them, or some some factions like the Fremen get them for free. After that, it's the shipment and movement phase. So this is what takes more on this game. So you need to pay for your sh your troops to come from space into. You need to pay for the spacing guild. And then you need to move them around in the map. And moving in the map means that, um, for example, if you, want, you can only move to an adjacent place with a group of troops, right? Like something like this. But if you have someone from your faction on both uh, either Arakin or Kartag, they have access to the Ornicopters, as you can see here. So that means they move three, so they can move around faster because of the Ornicopters. That's it. So it's really important to control this. Um, then you have the battle phase. So after everyone has moved their troops, if there are two different factions within the same space, non-allied because allies cannot share the same space only enemies the battle need to happen okay so i've described the battles you need to use the battle wheels the leaders the weapons the shields etc and then whoever wins gains control of the territory and lose loses all the forces there could be really painful this could be really painful you could have like if you don't properly plan you could have a huge force in a planet and if you die at least by one you <clears throat> you're out you lose everything okay and if you win you you keep the card so it's really unfair because the winner not only takes control but also keeps the cards keeps the leader gets the money from a slain leader so really really be careful with that be careful um also there is also an aggressor and a defender so the aggressor is the player on player's turn, that is resolving an attack. So if I'm resolving my attacks on my turn and I'm a, uh, I'm sharing space, I'll be the aggressor. 
uh, and I will be the one if there is a tie in the end I will win okay. after all the battles have been decided and then we have the spice harvest so if there are spice on uh, sectors or territories where there are troops s uh, troops can each troop can take two more if you control the well, at least one airport you can your troops can carry three spices because you have the ornate droppers to help and then the mental the maintain stage which is the stage where we check if any of the factions already fulfills the conditions for victory cool now that you've you you understand better the sequence of, of the game let me show you the rest of the components so you have the trader cards in the beginning of the game you deal certain trader cards for all the factions that are playing this game can be played up to six so uh, if you're playing with six so all these cards will be possible given to a player and what you have here is the name of a leader now uh, and a faction right so imagine that i'm fighting i have this card and by luck i'm fighting fremen and then the other player is using james in the battle so before the battle resolves i, I just say hey sorry but Jamie's is on my pay payroll and he's a traitor. The other guy immediately loses everything. Troops, the leader, the cards, and I win the fight automatically and administratively. So these are very powerful cards. Okay. And then, I haven't played yet, but there is um, an advanced mode. I think it's an advanced mode. The Atreides also have the quiz Adrak. Every time you loot four Lutz forces in battle, you move your quiz attack their counter, so there's a counter here there's a, to go up by the number of spaces equal to the number of forces lost. Immediately after you your counter reaches 7, which, which is fast, you may use the quiz attack token which we'll see what it is. I don't know I don't know, I haven't seen and played um, so I'll also explain this, this is the prediction for the Banner Jesuit okay and there's also a deck here which I haven't used, but it's it's the storm. So instead of the storm moving by uh, players' inputs, there is a deck that move, makes the storm move certain sectors clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So it moves back. The storm moves back. I haven't used this one here, but it creates more chaos. Okay, what? What is the only thing left here to see is the factions the factions right. and the powers so i'll start with the ones that i'm familiar with like for example the emperor okay which starts with every all the factions have 20 forces at least the ones in the base game he starts with all of them in the reserves of planet so there's the emperor in the beginning of the movie that there's nothing on the planet right and then it starts with lots of spies and it can revive for free and you have access to great wealth as the emperor okay and on the bidding stage which is when you other players are trying to buy treasury cards they pay to the emperor so the emperor is always flooding with money flooding with money and when he buys cards he gives back to the bank the, the money that he pays when you have an alliance with the emperor the emperor can revive up to three extra forces, paying six or two for each, from the Telaxo tanks. The Telaxo tanks is the place on the board here that the forces are recovered. Then on the advanced game, you have access to the Sardau car, the troops for the Emperor. Your five, your five star forces. So some of them will have a star. They are the elite Sardau, Sardau car. They have a special fighting capability. They are worth two normal forces in the battle and in taking losses against all opponents except the Fremen. Your so facing the Fremen, they are worthless. That's what what it says, right? Yeah. Your star forces are worth just one force against Fremen. That it is. They are treated as one force in revival. Only one Sardo core force can be revised per turn okay um yeah we know the solar card they are very well trained etc 
but then on the planet Dune, they are worthless. That's why the Fremen, the Fremen kick their asses. Then the Spacing Guild. Uh, it starts with some forces in the game. It revives one, and then what are the advantages of the Spacing Guild? When other factions ship forces into Dune from their off-planet reserves, they pay you the spice instead of the bank. And there are three types of shipments. You are capable of making one of the three types of shipments each turn, only the Spacing Guild. So you may ship normally from off-planet reserves to Dune. You may ship any number of forces from any one territory to another territory in the board, so you can teleport yourself after certain things. You may ship any number of forces from one territory back to your reserves. So yeah, why do that? That could that could be life saving if you know that your forces are going to be decimated by the storm or by an attack, so you can ship them back. Half price. You pay only half the normal fee when shipping your forces. You pay one spice for every two of your forces shipped back to reserve. Uh, you pay only half the normal fee. So if I remember correctly, the normal fee was two, right? Uh, you pay one spice for every two of your forces. Once it was two for two. I don't remember. I need to check this. Sorry, my memory. It's, this game has lots of numbers. You always need to have the the book next to you because there will there is shipment shipment of reserves. Yeah, you, the player must. Uh, can you read? No, wait. It's off camera. Uh, the cost of shipment of reserves is one spice per force. Okay, so you pay one and you 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 drop two. That's it. No, wait. One spice per force into any stronghold and two spice per force shipped into... Two spice per force, that was the idea. The, the idea that I had. So here, you pay just one for every two forces shipped back. That's it. Back. Yeah, it's the double. Sorry, I'm very tired. Uh, the Spacing Guild has a special victory condition. So if no faction have been able to win the game by the end of the game, you have prevented the control of Dune and you automatically win the game. So after, in the end of the turn 10, if no one conquered the three strongholds or the four strongholds, or the Fremen has one with their special victory condition, we'll see what it is, the Spacing Guild wins because they, they've been able to control the plant. When you have an alliance with them, allies may ship from their off planet reserves onto Dune and, cross, and also cross ship from one territory to another. It forced already in Dune at the space at half price rate as well. Your allies win with you if you okay it, by the, the special conditions. And there is the advanced game, which is ship and move when you wish. You may take your shipment and move action out of turn. How cool! So the other ones are limited to only move here in this stage, but the guild, the space guild, can move anytime. This is not smelling good, so let me move away. Yeah, so cool. This is amazing. Then the treaties, the treaties. They start with ten forces at Arakin and ten forces in reserve, ten spies, the treachery deck, and the spice deck near your player's position. You manage the decks. Ah, okay. Because you have limited pre-science during the bidding round you may look at each treasury card as it comes up for purchase before any faction bids on it you and only you may keep written records about the card so you know because the bidding i forgot to say that the bidding is secret you don't know it's it's like a hidden bidding you don't know which cards you are bidding so it could be good things or bad things no one knows even you so you bid blindly but the, the treaties with the pre-science, they are able to know, okay, so this card is the one going for bidding. So it's a gun and who won the bid? Oh, it was the Arconans. So the Arconans have a gun. I know that. And they will know everything for all the cards. And then on the movement, the start of a movement, before anyone moves, you may look at the top card of the spice deck. Okay, so you know where the spice will blow next. And you can move yourself into that direction. Or you know that there's going to be a, a worm and you can move away. And during battle, what is the advantage? During battle, 
you may force your opponent to reveal your choice of one of the four elements they will use in their battle against you. The leader, the weapon, the defense, or the number dialed. If you choose to ask about the weapon or defense, and your opponent tells you that they are not playing that element during this battle, you may not ask to see a different element. Okay. That's also very powerful. Okay, that's very powerful. Because if you know what kind of weapon they are going to use, you can protect yourself. If you know what kind of shield they are going to use, you can use a different weapon. So this one is super powerful. It's very similar to the the Band Judgment. Okay, and when you make an alliance with the uh, 3Ds, you may assist your allies by forcing their opponent to show them one element of their battle plan. Okay, so for force it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. So everyone that is on your alliance knows at least one one item that the opponent is going to use. On the advanced game advantage, you have the Quizats at the rack. This card starts out inactive and may not be used. Used when Quizzes at the rack countered is uh, gets to seven. We've seen that. It becomes active for the rest of the game and may be used as follows. It cannot be used alone in battle, but may add two strength to leaders or ship heroes in one territory per turn. If the leader or ship hero is killed, the Twizak Red has no effect in the battle. A leader accompanied by the Quizzet Adrak cannot turn traitor. Oh, that's that's important. The Quizzet Adrak can only be killed if blown by a Lasgan shield explosion. If killed, the Quizzet Adrak must be revived like any other leader. Alive or dead, the Quizzet Adrak has no effect on the rule governing revival of a treaty leader. So the Quizzet Adrak is... So he's basically... That's pull treaties, right? So is just giving you permanent plus two. But you can only use it once per turn, right? One territory per turn. So we can only use this one till we'll be there. It, can, it cannot be turned traded, that's very important. If killed, the quiz at Nadrak must be revived like any other leader. And what is the cost for the quiz at Nadrak? Just two? Because this is not the leader, it's another one, it accompanies. So maybe you pay just two. Mm, I need to check. I need to check the guidelines. Because the card doesn't say that. The quiz at the rack. So like after the first first or two battles, then you'll have this permanent power to be two two times extra strong and protected against treasons. Especially if you are going to face the Arconans, then you should you should take the quiz at Adrak indeed. Then the Banner Jazzerit. The Banner Jazzerit. Your forces have two sides, the spiritual one, advisor, and the battle side. Fighters are normal ones. Fighters are normal forces. Mm -hmm. At the start of the game, you start with a pistol advisor in any territory of your choice. If you are alone in the territory, you flip the advisor to a fighter. You always... Oh, wait a second. We are seeing the advanced. Oh, these have so... Did I miss something? No. On the other ones? No. So, yeah, look at that. The Bandit Jesuit and the Fremen, they are the only ones that have written on both sides. So, let's see the basics first. One for, they only have one force on the Polar Sink and 19 in the reserves. And they start with five and they can do one revival. Then they have a, what I think is a, a very different, difficult thing to achieve, which is the prediction. In the beginning of the game, you can you can put aside two of these cards and you can try to guess who is going to win the game. So you have like turn one, turn two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Where's eight? Did I miss eight? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's where's eight? <laughs> what happened to the oh there it is the eight card. So you can try to guess in which turn and which faction Arcan Emperor, yourself, Fremen, Spacing Guild, or Atreides is going to win. So if in fact that faction wins on that turn, 
and they're like, yeah, I won. And you've made that prediction in the beginning of the game. You win above that planet, that, that player. Because in theory, if you make that prediction and you want to win, it means that you've been playing, you're pulling the strings behind in defending, attacking, helping for that player to win on that turn. So this is very difficult to achieve. I can only imagine that if you manage to nail that, you should be like, that should be a huge party. Uh, but it's very difficult. So it's not the best of the powers for the manager to read the prediction. Uh, so they also are the spiritual advisor. Whenever any other faction ships forces into Dune from off planet, you also put one force in Polar Sync. Okay? So, because they are spiritual advisors, they accompany a spiritual advisors everyone that goes to the planet. And then they are advisors, and then later on they will change to fighters because they've been trained by the ways of the Bene Gesserit. And then the most powerful thing the Bene Gesserit have, which is the voice. Not the TV contest, but when they are fighting an opponent, they can say, you need to use a certain card, or you cannot use a certain card. And so if you know that you have a certain defense, you say, hey, you need to use a weapon that matches my defense, and then you cannot kill my leader. And then, if they have that, that weapon, they simply will lose the battle. It's very powerful. And your ally, in, in the Alliance, your ally also has that power, the power of the voice. And this is really tricky with the Arcanon, because they will have lots of cards, so that we, we, Arcanons using the voice is impossible to beat. It's impossible to beat. And then on the advanced mode, you get the money from the bank always. You can use worthless cards as powerful cards. The advisors will become fighters. That's it. Then the Fremen. The Fremen, it's only two left for us to, to finish this. The Fremen, they start with all the forces. Um, ten forces distributed in the game. They don't, they don't ship from off-board. They are always, everything is already in the planet. You don't need to pay the Spacing Guild. Um, you revive three forces for free. So you don't need to pay because they pop up like mushrooms everywhere. There's no shipment. Um, on movement, you move two territories instead of one. You are protected against the worm, so your troops don't die if the worm pops out. And there is a specific victory condition. So if we end, in the end of the, the game, if no one controls Stitch the Bar or Arbania Stitch and neither Archon, Trees or Emperor are on 2x switch, you win the game. That's it. Um, that's it. And if, if you if you it's important to say that if even if you don't match this winning condition and there is no spacing guild because in the game the spacing guild would win over this if spacing guild is not playing Fremen win so they, it means that they were able to control also the planet in the alliance the other player can also revive three forces for free and then on the advanced mode they also have lots of powers in the advanced mode they control the storm Move the star marker, normally using the battle wheels on the first turn of the game, but subsequently from there, it's the storm. It's determined by the storm cards. You randomly select one face down storm card, secret look at it, and place it face down on the margin of the game board. In the next storm phase, the number on that storm card is revealed. The storm is moved counterclockwise, that number of sectors, and your storm card is returned to the set of six face down storm cards. You then randomly select the storm token, select the storm token, and look at it for the next turn storm movement. Okay. You then randomly select a storm token. Okay, then worms. During a spice blow, all additional worms which appear after the first worm can be placed by you in any same territory as you wish. Any forces there except yours will be devoured, so you control the worms. If your forces are caught in the storm, only half of them will be killed. Oh, that's good, that's good. 
you can, you may also bring your reserves into a storm at half the cost. Oh, that's also good. And especially so. Normally, when there's a storm, you cannot go in, pass through, etc. But on the Invest game, the Fremen can be, do that. Then you also have the special troops, the Fadaikin troops. Your three star forces, you only have three, have a special fighting ability. They are worth two normal forces in battle and in taking losses. They are each treated as one for revival. Only one Fadaikin force can be revived per turn. And in battle, your forces do not require spies to count at their full strength. What does that mean? I get it now. I paused just to check that. So I've never played the advanced mode. So I was not aware there is a different rule in fighting on advanced mode. So you need to have spies to support the fight for each troop that you are placing. Um, so each 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 money each troop will require you one spice, and if you don't play the spice, the troop will be counted as just half. Okay. So that means, which means that. Then in battle, your forces do not require spies to count at their full strength. They are always at full strength. So it's really... The advanced game changes a little bit. So it's really... The Fremen are very strong. Very strong in battles. Yes. Yes, they have the numbers. And the numbers are combined with the spice that you you can play. So I guess the spice burst will also work a little bit different. You'll, you must have access to more spice than just the base game. There is a double spice blow. There are more spice flowing, right? And there must be some other differences which I need to, to prepare myself to check later. And then finally, the last one. It's been a long trip, I know. Our tune is very far away. Uh, they start with 10 forces in Karthag, 10 forces, and 10 forces out. They excel in treasuries, so they have, instead of just one, they have four traders more probability of having your leader in their payroll so be careful and instead of uh four cards they can hold eight treachery cards eight and when someone draws sorry in the beginning of the game you are dealt two cards instead of one and every time you buy um you buy a, yeah, a treachery card, you get an extra one to the maximum of eight. So they will have all the weapons, all the traders, very dangerous. And if you have an alliance with them, you can also, you can also use their own traitor cards with your battles, right? So if you if, if they find that your ally, your allied player is facing a, 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 tra a leader that they have the traitor card, they can use it and screw the other the other guys. In the advanced game, they just on this side. Every time you win a battle, you can either randomly select one leader from the loser, including the leader used in battle if not killed, but excluding all the leaders already elsewhere in the turn, and place that leader disc face down into the Tylaxo tanks to gain two spies from the spice bank. Or you can keep the leader and use it use it once in a battle, after which, if it wasn't killed during that battle, you must return that leader to its faction. When all of your own leaders have been killed, you must return all captured leaders immediately to their factions. Killed captured leaders are put in the Telaxa tanks, from which their factions can revive. Okay. A captured leader uses used in a battle may be claimed as a traitor okay so they they take prisoners in the other leaders and they can use them to their advantage like in the game when they made prisoners some of the characters i need to rest now we went through everything i guess everything dune has to offer and uh, it's just half of the content because if you're watching this video now you know that you, please note that you, you either will find already in the channel the other three videos for the three expansions or after this video I will release those three other videos. So for that it's really important that you, if you could hit that like button, consider subscribing if you are a Dune fan like myself. Um, I would like to see you on that, those videos as well. And if you like 
board games in general that I truly believe that you'll find interesting content in the channel or other board games. Um, this is very different from Dune Imperium. It's a very different game. Dune Imperium is a deck builder. This one is a diplomacy, area control, war game. But I hope you have liked and I hope you to be part of this community and see you in the next videos. Thank you. I truly enjoyed this, this, this trip to Dune and I hope to continue in, with other trips with you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.